Howdy once more, it's Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher, and I'm here at my Creality CR10 printer again, and this is episode 4 as I progress through the learning stages, and I've, I've made uh, quite a few uh, oh, improvements uh, in my own mind as to how to do this, but the latest project here is kind of a, I'm regressing is what I'm doing, and I'm going back to this carriage stop, which is I uh, made a video quite a while ago, and that's tips 370 and 371, a carriage stop for the Atlas 12-inch uh, lathe. Now, this project is done. Why am I coming back to it? Because I just wanted to show you that the possibilities of using a printer for prototypes or uh, for uh, dimensions and, and just for thinking about things. And uh, last year, after I made this, Kevin uh, Ciampi out of the Garden State sent me the blueprint. Now the job was already done and he did a beautiful job on that with all the dimensions and so on and I've been in contact with him and he uses Autodesk Inventor as the software and I thank him for what he's done and, and we're continuing to work uh, together. Do not confuse him with Kevin Peterson who also did some work for me. But here is the prototype. I know I'm still using tape here because everybody says use straight glass. Well, I, I've been using uh, white rain. It absolutely does not work. I think somebody said you had to use another brand of extra hole like women used when they had beehive haircuts, hairdos. That's the support. So let me pull that off. And I might do that off camera. Oh, there it comes. That's, of course, waste. And this green color sure does not show up, and there's support in there as well. So let me clean that up. I did several other versions of this without support, and it was not successful without support. So the support was necessary, but I really didn't want it in the holes, but I pressed the wrong button or something. But, you know, you got to learn all this stuff. But again, the purpose of this, and there's supports in these holes as well. And uh, it's a learning curve for me because I'm an old man. So let me get those supports out of there and uh, talk just a little bit more. And then uh, there's not a whole lot more to this video. And I'm always appreciating suggestions that people give me, although I've had the same suggestions many times uh, in re regards to tape. Some people love it, some say don't ever use tape, it's crazy. So, you know, who do I believe? Who do I believe? Be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now, I did not bother to print the bottom clamp because that's a, a no-brainer. But at this point, with a prototype, I could have... A, well, this is the prototype. Uh, put it over on the lathe to check to see if it was the right size and the holes were the right size. And I did run reamers through these holes to clean them up where the support was just now. And uh, you can see that uh, this is the exact same dimensions as this because, in fact, Kevin took uh, the data, the, uh, the files, right off of uh, what he made there in the way of a blueprint and converted them into STL files or whatever and sent those to me. So. Uh, he claimed there wasn't much work to do that because he already had those files in his computer. So, thanks, Kevin, again. So, do you get a why? I'm doing a 3D thinking here and modeling and prototyping is what I'm doing, although it had already been done. But think of another project, and that's just a, a nice way to do it. Although I do not know the CAD, I have to rely on other people at this time, as you know. But up to this point, I often made a little wooden model out of maple wood, and that was great too, and it's still a good method. But what I really liked about this, and the reason I'm making this video, is Kevin also sent me the dials. Now, the dial is the hardest part to make on this because it has graduations, and I never did put the numbers on it. Remember, I talked about I need numbers on there, and stamping the numbers is quite difficult and intricate, and often you can ruin the piece by stamping numbers. So, Kevin uh, created the dial, and it's even threaded, 
and uh, really works quite well. Now I did a couple different colors. I think the red is the best and then I rubbed uh, different materials. Magic marker didn't work very well and then wipe it and I even bought some uh, a five dollar uh, wood filler. That didn't work. That was a waste of money. My Minwax that one I think was red magic marker but then I had to be careful what I wiped this with because some of the uh, chemicals react of course with the PLA in the end the best thing that I had was a Listo marker remember Listo I used to use those at the hardware store that's straight out of the 50s but I still had several of those and that was a good material to fill this with. Now I asked Kevin can you do this one more time for me and make the graduations and the numbers slightly deeper and these were printed in this manner this orientation straight up like a silo and uh, although the project is done what I am wanting to do here is make lathe dials for the crossfeed and the compound that's my ultimate goal but I got sidetracked doing this, but since these were available by Kevin, uh, I am able to think about it and, uh, you know, determine whether or not I should proceed with that other project. So this is, to me, what it's all about right now rather than the other stuff. But I am enjoying the 3D printer. I am seeing there's an awful lot of resistance from my subscribers and viewers as I move into... Uh, more modern technology, but this is about as far as I'm going to go at this time, and uh, and I have not forsaken my metalworking at all. Matter of fact, I just did a, a project the other day. If you haven't seen it yet, this little center gauge attachment here. So watch that video if you haven't. And I got a lot of other videos coming up, and I will keep you updated from time to time on what I'm doing here with the 3D printer. If that doesn't interest you, just don't even look at those videos. But that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. This is Tubal Kane.